you know, what was that? The first thing he did is put his fingers up to his lips, walked out to the front of the store, looked up and down both ways, and he spoke English. Okay. And he goes, he goes, Savak, Savak, which was the secret, the Shah's secret police. Okay. And I goes, oh my, you know. So anytime I would walk into the store, I would just point to them and, you know, just to see if that was the same reaction. It was the same reaction on it. They had to have them pictures in the store or the Sabak police would come and just bust their place up and it was forbidden them to sell whatever, whether it was material they were selling or hardware or, or uh, pots and pans or, you know, whatever. So the store owners did not were not necessarily reverent towards the Shaw. They put the picture up of the Shaw and his wife and the family just to keep the Saba away. They had to. Right. It, it, it was you had to have it in there or you couldn't run your business. Unbelievable. So that's that's when I <clears throat> knew uh, that something was bad wrong. You know, later on in the 70s, when the Shah was overthrown by the Ayatollah Khomeini, there was a uh, on TV. I seen a he was a CIA analyst or ex CIA or something. He goes, "Boy, we didn't see that coming. You know, <laughs> I thought, well, you idiot, you. You, you saw, you saw, it com- you saw it coming. You saw it coming in 1968. Absolutely. I mean, you knew something was going to happen because it was everywhere. They were afraid to death of the Sabak, and uh, I mean, I couldn't believe that idiot got up on TV and said that. And uh, I guess it did fool him, <laughs> you know, but. Uh, it was crazy. Uh, anyhow, well, then, now, how, now how did how did you get? I mean, once you're 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 finished in in Iran, you deliver the cars, you've had your five days at the at the boss's place. Uh, you you kind of wore out your welcome by accusing his wife of stealing from your girlfriend. You were booted from his house. You, you earned twenty five dollars on this trip, so you weren't exactly going to go ahead and catch the first airplane back to Munich. I mean, how do you, how do you get to your next place? You've got, you've got 25 bucks in your pocket. What, what do you do? No, no, <laughs> I, I, I had, you traveled back then with traveler's checks. There were no credit cards and none of this. Okay. Stuff. No cell, cell phones and nothing. But, uh, so, uh, we, we carry traveler's checks. Okay. Everybody, everybody, that's how you uh, dealt with it. And, and they were American Express. And so if you had American Express travel check, you could also get mail anywhere in the major cities that, that American Express was at. Okay. That's how you kept up, kept up with the world. Okay. And now another thing, one day when I was down in the in the city, I just thought of, I'm, I'm walking through the old market. I was just wearing a pair of shorts and, and a T-shirt. Mm-hmm. And people would look at you, you know, funny, because I, but I didn't know you care either. <coughs> and across the street, uh, this two lane street, this here older woman, right? And she seemed to be an older woman. I see her looking at me. She's got the heat job on and she's got it covered over one eye. She's just looking out at one eye. Okay. And she comes walking at an angle across the street towards me. But I see her, she's still, I think she's still looking at me. Why, I don't know. But she just kept, and she kept walking and walked right into a street sign, (laughs) hit her square in the forehead and dropped dropped her like a rock right to the road. (laughs) Well, she probably wasn't used to people with short pants because even even to this day, when I travel to a Muslim country like uh, like Malaysia, they tell you, you know what? If you're going to leave the hotel, wear long pants because wearing shorts is not is not the thing to do. Well, see that that has that has changed a lot since I was there because I wore shorts every day, and nobody said anything <laughs> except for the except for the gal who had an eye on you. No, I'm I'm talking about any Muslim country, right? Uh, you know including Malaysia. I spent a lot of time in Malaysia. Mm-hmm. But anyway, yeah, she 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 just, uh, I guess she was looking because I had shorts on and T-shirt. She had never but seen such women, a thing. The Western women 
it was horrible for them in Tehran. The older men, they were horrible. Their favorite trick was just a Western woman. Now, if you were covered, they didn't bother you. But we didn't even know about that stuff at the time. And most Western women didn't either. Most Western women didn't cover up like that. Right. So if you were covered down to your, uh, uh, <coughs> excuse me, down to your hand or your ankle, that was bad, you know. Mm-hmm. So their favorite trick was when they would walk by a woman on the street, that wasn't covered, they would pick their elbow and they would stick it out and jam them in the tit. Really? As hard as, as hard as they could. And I mean, they turned black and blue. That's how hard they would hit you. Wow. Now these stories, what I'm telling you, I know for a fact. Because you were the there. Woman, you were there. One of the guys, one of the guys grabbed her in the crotch. Really? She had on a, she had on a pair of jeans and a underwear and a dress over the top of that, mm-hmm. but her arms weren't covered. Wow. He grabbed her so hard in the crotch when she got home back to the motel, he had ripped the hair out of her. Really? Wow. Absolutely. Not a lie whatsoever that, that he ripped the hair, a chunk of hair right out of her. Another girl we knew in Tehran. The guy took his bicycle and ran the front wheel right between your legs. How ignorant. Yes, it was horrible. They, it, Iran was the worst of all the uh, Muslim countries that we went through. It, it was it was incredible. But, but uh, anyway, after we got it, we, oh, and in Tehran, and this will be a story for later maybe, when we was met a bunch of Westerners there, and I don't know who this guy was. I have no idea to this day. He was talking about some of the OD on heroin. Okay. And how and how he saved their life. And uh, and uh, I just listened to it. Didn't, didn't mean nothing. And uh, anyhow, uh, just, just keep that for later. Sure. Uh, then we went on to, from Tehran to Mashhad. And nothing, nothing there, just dry and hardly anything at all. And then in Mashhad, we went to the border to, to, to cross to Afghanistan. Okay. Well, when we, got, when we got to the Iranian border, there's about maybe 10, 15 American people. Well, not just Americans, Western people, English, Americans, whatever. Standing there at the border, they can't leave. They can't, they, they, they can't, they can't leave Iran? They can't leave Iran. When they drove their cars from Munich to Tehran, they put the car in their passport. When they got into the city of Tehran, the people said they pulled up to the side of the street and parked their cars. They said, thank you very much, paid them their money, and they left. But they didn't give them back their passports. No, they had their passports. Okay. They didn't go to the, they didn't go to the, to the Iranian uh, uh, customs and get it cleared out. Of, they owed a hundred percent duty on the car they drove. So they stuck the but duty on the on the on the person who was driving the car. Correct. It was. It, I I would have had to pay that. Wow. But luckily, th- this guy was honest that we got and took care of it. Okay. They couldn't get out of the country. Wow. Well, I, I guess they. I guess they did, but did they? I guess they had to pay the duties. Well, I don't know what happened. Uh, I didn't. They had been there for some of them for over a week. Wow. They didn't have the money that, to pay the duty. It might have been a, a few thousand dollars, even. Uh-huh. Maybe if they had a good Mercedes, it might have been five thousand dollars. Wow. Unbelievable. So, but so the but the that, guy you the guy you dealt with took care of you. You didn't you didn't have to have that problem. That's why I said earlier, he was a very nice person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was a very nice person. So that, that, that woke us up then, you know, uh, of what, what could have happened. So, I mean, Iran is, a, is certainly a different place today uh, than, than it was back then. And, and you tell these stories about how, you know, Many of the people didn't like the Shaw. Now you hear stories of how a lot of people did like the Shaw. And I have to think, I mean, 
what I found in my travels is that, that people are people. They're they're sure that some 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 types of people are a little bit different, but for the most part, people are, are people. And uh, in this country, some people like Trump, some people don't like Trump, and they say, "Well, we're a country divided." I've got to think that back then there were probably those who liked the Shah and those that did not did not like the Shah. And today, there's probably people who like the Ayatollah and people who don't like the Ayatollah. Uh, it just depends on who's in charge. Is that Absolutely. an is that an accurate statement? They people do not like to be controlled. I don't care what country you're in. I don't care who, uh, 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 what army you know invaded them or whatever. They hate you. If the, if you are so controlled that you can't do what you you know just the normal things, they hate you. People do like freedom. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you are. People still want to do what they want to do. And if 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 they if 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 they want if they're a woman and they want to wear a hijab, then they should wear a hijab. If they don't want to, they don't want to have to. Yeah, and if they're made to, they hate it. They're having a lot of trouble in Iran over that. Arresting women who take it off in public, and they and they arrest them right then. They beat them. They they stone them to death. Yet they do all kinds of crazy stuff. Well, one of the problems I, uh, one of the things I hear that they're doing in in Iran with the with the hijabs, is uh, they still wear them because it's kind of the law, but they wear them, but they're they're very minimalist. I mean, they they cover their heads, but not much of their heads, and they're not plain colors. They're 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 colorful, multicolors, even designer hijabs. Uh, what I also hear is quite often in a restaurant, they'll, they'll take them off. And if the police say, Hey, look, you've taken this thing off. So, oh no, I, I was just taking it off to readjust my hair and then they put it right back on. So, so they're, they're testing the waters over there. They're trying to find interesting ways to push the envelope just a little bit. They are from what I have seen and read about. Yes, that that's what's happening. And some are outright flaunting it, taking them off yeah. and, and waving them in the air, you know, but they get arrested. And, and, uh, and that woman on just yesterday on TV talking about this here, uh, uh, Soleimani that was killed, right. that a lot of people hated him because it, he has killed so many people. And even those pe- people that have been dying in Iran that have been protesting, mm-hmm. she said that they cannot even have a funeral for him. If you're killed on the street protesting, your family is not allowed to claim that body or have a funeral for you. Well, see, that's that's part of the whole. I mean, it, it's funny how that whole part of the country works. I mean, to to most Americans, to most Westerners, maybe Americans in particular, we just think uh, Iran, Iraq, they're all Muslims and they're all the same. But they're so different because I, the Iranians and the Iraqis hate each other uh, for two reasons. I mean, uh, one of them are uh, what is it? The uh, uh, the Shiites are uh, Iran. Shiites are Iran. The Sunnis are Iraq, and the, and the Iraqis are Arabs. The Iranians are Persians. So they're so they're a different type of Muslim, and they're a different type of people. So even the even the uh, uh, the Sunnis in Iraq. We're sick of people like Soleimani because he was Iranian. Okay, yeah, okay, you, you believe in the same form of Islam that we believe in, but you're a Persian. Or okay, we we, we have different, you know, one we're, we're both Persians, but we have different religions. We're both Arab, but we have different religions. There's so many things that divide these people. Oh, uh, they've been killing each other since the beginning of time. Yeah. They, they 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 fight uh, uh, the the Saudis. They're they're Sunni and they hate the Shiites. Correct. Uh, like you say, Iraq was was uh, a Sunni. Well, of course, there were Shiites there too, but he was killing them also. Saddam Hussein. Yeah. You know they were they were killing those as well as the Christians and well, and Sa- Sa- Saddam Hussein was a Sunni, correct? He was a a, a minority Sunni in a uh, pre- in a predominantly Shiite country, right? Right. The the Sunnis controlled it. Right. The Sunnis was, controlled it, even though they were a minority. I don't know what the percentage of it was, but uh, but yeah, they 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 controlled it. They were, I think, they were the minority, but I don't know what the percentage was. Well, that's, that's the, and when this whole thing started in the uh, the Iraqi the USMC in Iraq, 
and the U.S. troops say, oh, we got to call in reinforcements. 